Hello friends. In today's documentary we will talk about The 10 Dark Secrets and Enigmas of the Vatican The Vatican Library was officially founded in 1475 and is one of the oldest and most valuable institutions of its kind in the world located in the Vatican. The idea of opening a public library in the Vatican belonged to Pope Nicholas V, to Mesa Parenticelli, as early as 1447 to 1455. The library began with a collection of 350 Latin manuscripts. The pontiff increased the collection by donating his personal library, as well as illustrating and copying several books. The Vatican Library is headed by a cardinal librarian of the Holy Roman Church, a prefect and a vice prefect. Currently the library includes 1.6 million books and many other tens of thousands of works and manuscripts covering a wide range of fields. From mathematics and theology to science and philosophy arranged in shelves with a total length of 85 kilometers. Here you can see letters from Petrarch, Michelangelo, and Martin Luther, as well as King Henry VIII's love letters to and Bullen. Beyond Catholic teachings and important Christian writings, the Holy See's library contains rare pre-Columbian manuscripts, writings from China, collected by early papal explorers, works confiscated from ancient scholars but fortunately preserved for centuries or ancient versions illustrations of non-Christian holy books. One of the most important volumes is the Codex Vaticanus Graecus, the oldest printed manuscript of the Bible. More than 70,000 valuable volumes of the library are kept in an underground bunker, each of which has been equipped with a chip that emits radio signals in order to prevent loss or theft. An aura of mystery reigns over the Vatican Library, believing that the secret archives contain theological information that would shake Christian dogmas from their foundations, unknown gospels and initial versions, different from the current one, of the Bible, from which key passages were extracted, pages to which only a few insiders have access, who transmit this data through the generations. The mystery is all the greater because only a few thousand visitors, exclusively specialists, from all corners of the world, cross its threshold every year. The access of a simple visitor here is prohibited. It is allowed only to world-renowned scholars based on a request that is approved by the Pope himself. As one of the most closely guarded places in the world, in the Vatican archives only four people have access to these documents, the librarian, two emeritus archivists, and the head of the secret Vatican archives. Everyone else, including high representatives of the Holy See, when they want to read a certain document from the secret archives, must make a request to that effect, then wait for approval. Over time, many researchers and journalists have wanted to enter the Vatican archives, but tens of thousands of requests have remained, forever, rejected. Mysteries and information hidden in the archives. What is hidden in these archives could change human history forever. Researchers are apparently being given access to the non-hazardous part of the archives. However, even in these sections, there are books that raise questions about why the church kept them. For example, the Red Dragon the Dragon Rouge, also known as the Gospel of Satan, a dangerous grimoire of black magic, is in the secret archives. Discovered in Solomon's tomb in Jerusalem, it was transferred to the Vatican. This grimoire is believed to be written by the devil himself, containing rituals to summon demons and make pacts with dark forces. Why would the church want to possess a manuscript like this and keep it in the archives, under one of the holiest places in Christianity? Again, this is not speculation. The Catholic Church claims official ownership of this book. There is speculation by historians and occultists who have visited the secret library via astral projection that claim that numerous dangerous books are in the Vatican's secret archives. Dangerous magic books used by Mussolini and Hitler. The archives were used by Nazi occultists. Living proof of the existence of demons and Nephilim descriptions of demon race humans. Proof of the existence of aliens. These accounts are hidden because their existence might shake the faith of the masses. Unknown accounts of Jesus Christ. The actual name of the God who is believed to hold the power of the universe. Secret occult and magical artifacts from around the world that hold unimaginable power. Sacred artifacts of the old religion. Once paganism was demonized, the most powerful relics were kept by the Pope to increase his power and rule. Secrets that can change history. 
The Vatican archives are an enigma and pique everyone's interest. Many of these documents would change the world if made public. Since the 18th century, no pope has allowed access to these documents. These documents have a psychological but also a historical impact. There are said to be 105 top secret documents, of which 20 have not been disclosed until now. Many of these are papal letters to Hitler, King Henry's letter announcing to the Vatican that he renounces Catholicism. Other documents refer to levitation, teleportation, chronoportation. Other documents refer to the beginnings of Christianity, which if known would shake the world. An important document is addressed by the Pope to President Roosevelt, in which he opposed the establishment of the State of Palestine. In May 2015, Vatican spokesman Federico Lombardi stated that the Vatican recognized the existence of the Palestinian state. Along the way, the Vatican has tried to keep its archive and library, which contains more than 53,000 books, out of the public eye. In some of these books, the personality of Jesus is presented, but also many things that Christendom does not know. Other books refer to the secret locations of the Ark of the Law, the Holy Grail, and other objects that have shaken history to its foundations and given rise to many legends. The Vatican has hidden various prophecies and messages that the Virgin Mary gave. There are a number of documents and books to which only four cardinals, close to the Pope, and the Pope himself have access. In addition to the Apocalypse according to John that appears in the New Testament, the Vatican has documents about the end of the world. These cannot be shown to the public because it would create mass hysteria. Other documents show the links the Vatican had with the Nazis, the Soviets, and the Americans. The Vatican played an overwhelming role in losing or winning some wars. In addition to cult books, the Vatican has a collection of heretical texts. We mean black magic and white magic. The scholar Mycel Ledwith was close to Pope Benedict and had access to certain documents. He made a statement that may overturn the theory of Latinity. He claims that cultured Latin is derived from the ancient Romanian language. The inhabitants of the Carpathians are the parents of the Latin language, the scientist declared. According to his claims, the Latinization theory is a false one. The wars between the Dacians and the Romans were fratricidal, between peoples of the same origin. Mitra and occult symbols the Catholic symbols represented by the accessories that the Pope wears whenever he officiates a ceremony have their origins in paganism. Have you ever wondered why the mitre looks so strikingly like a fish head? What are the actual origins of this hat and what does it really represent? A mitre is a head covering worn by Catholics whenever a ceremony is officiated. In this case, the papal mitre is triangular in shape when viewed from the front, but as a whole it resembles a fish's mouth. The church claims that this hat represents the tongues of fire that rested on the heads of the disciples, but its story seems to be much older than that. If we look into the culture of the Philistines or the Babylonians, we realize that the papal mitre was worn by the priests who worshipped the god Dagon. The mitres of that time, identical to that of the Vatican, depicted the mouth of the god Dagon open and ready to throw fire at those who violated the imposed laws. The god Dagon appeared immediately after the flood and was half man, half fish. Barassus, a Babylonian priest of the 3rd century wrote, At first, they led a miserable existence, like beasts. But in the first year after the flood, there appeared in Babylonia an animal endowed with intelligence and reason named Oans. Oans was a kind of fish man or reptilian man, who due to the fact that he taught the people various secrets of nature was promoted to the status of a god, the god Dagon. He had the head of a fish, a tail and legs. He was endowed with a human voice, and he revealed to men the secret of letters, of science, but also of arts of all kinds. Also, the god Dagon taught people how to build temples according to the laws of the earth, imposed a set of laws, which were later followed in Babylonia, and thus became the master of life and death. The tufted head, divided into two triangular shapes, pushed the Babylonians to be inspired and create the mitre worn by the pagan priests. Moreover, each high priest wore a ring on his hand, which was kissed by his subjects. It is interesting that these two pagan elements were transmitted or taken over by Catholicism. The Pope wears a mitre that bears a striking resemblance to that created by the Babylonians, but also a ring, which is kissed by the faithful. 
The Fisherman's Ring and Faith The Fisherman's Ring, in Latin Annulus Piscatoris, is officially part of the insignia of the Pope, whom the Catholic Church identifies as the successor of St. Peter, whose profession was that of a fisherman. The Pope receives this ring at the beginning of his pontificate. The ring is made of gold and represents, in bar-relief, the Apostle Peter fishing from a boat. The fisherman's ring is a seal used until 1842 to seal any official document drawn up by the Pope or countersigned by him. It owes its name to the fact that it represents St. Peter fishing with a net from a boat, an evocation of the famous wonderful catch that the Apostle made at the place where Jesus told him to cast his nets slash nets, then asked him, Don't be afraid. From now on you will be a fisher of men. Was St. Peter supposed to fish out the hybrid people hiding in the seas and oceans, or is it simply another misunderstood metaphor in the Bible? Dagon and the Old Testament The Bible records the appearance of Dagon in the third millennium before the coming of Jesus. He was considered by the Philistines as their god, and human sacrifices were offered to him whenever necessary. This fish god, or considered by some to be reptilian, subjugated mankind for almost three millennia until Jesus was born. Then the leaders of the Philistines gathered to offer sacrifice to the great Dagon, their god, and rejoice, saying, Our god has given Samson, our enemy, into our hands. The book of Judges 16 verse 23. Strange Connections if there is a contradiction of ideas, laws, and perspectives between what the rule of the reptilian god Dagon meant and the teachings brought by Jesus, then why do we find reptilian elements and symbols within the Vatican? Is there a connection between the idea of paganism and the vision that the church holds today? Other secret documents. One, other versions of the Gospels that would show that Jesus Christ would not be what he is, son of God, this leading to the undermining of the entire Christian religion. If it had been something of great importance, which would have had the effect of shaking the foundations of Christianity, the Catholic Church would not have kept such materials, but would have simply burned them. Why keep for so many centuries and millennia something that would compromise you so badly? If there had been such evidence, over such a long period of time, someone would still have gotten hold of it and presented it to the world. So the simplest solution in order not to compromise would have been to destroy the materials, not to preserve them. So, I don't think it's something extremely compromising for the Christian religion. 2. Materials that would show that Jesus Christ married Mary Magdalene and had children. This hypothesis is even more fanciful, being launched with the famous Da Vinci Code. Jesus' purpose in the world was not to form a family, sick, but to save the world. If Jesus had been married to Mary Magdalene and had children, then he would have been nothing but an ordinary man and not the Son of God. And then, once again, the foundations of Christianity would have been shaken and, consequently, just as I explained in point one, the respective materials, if they existed, would have had to be destroyed and not preserved. 3. Secret Books About the End of the World Here's a fascinating hypothesis that actually makes more sense. In the New Testament, we only have the Apocalypse of John, the only material about the end of the world. It is possible, however, that there are more apocalypses, of which we do not know, in which the data about the end of the world would be presented in much more detail and more clearly. Why would the Vatican keep such materials secret? So that humanity does not know when this end of the world will come. If we all knew, for example, that the apocalypse would take place in one year, would anyone still work? Would anyone still produce? the whole of humanity would enter a real state of chaos and agitation. 4. Information about special relations between the Vatican and the Soviets, Nazis, or the CIA. Although this could also be a solution, it is still unlikely, since the Vatican's secret library has been known for a long time, since the 17th century, when Pope Paul V separated the Vatican Library from the secret archives. 5. Heretical writings collected over time. It is known that the Catholic Church published over time a list of works forbidden to circulate in the world, treatises on witchcraft, demonology, occultism, etc. Some of these heretical books were totally destroyed over time, the only copies that those from the Vatican archive remained. Maybe in some of the occult books there are magical formulas with real impact, 
That's why the Vatican didn't want to make them known. 6. A series of prophecies, like the prophecies of Fatima. It is known that, as part of the Fatima prophecies, 1917, for example, three messages were made public, but it seems that there are other messages that are kept secret by the Vatican. And it is possible that there are other prophecies made over time. Why would the papacy keep such messages hidden? Well, maybe for a similar reason why silence was kept in the case of the third message from Fatima, in order not to endanger the life of Pope John Paul II. 7. Records regarding the involvement and influence of world governments or organizations, for example, the Jesuits, in world history. It is known that this world has always been ruled by shadow forces. The Vatican probably has enough information about these occult forces, but, for obvious reasons, does not want to make them public. 8. Documents regarding the existence of religious artifacts. Is the Shroud of Turin a fake or an authentic one? Is there an Ark of the Law? Is there an original cross that Jesus was crucified on? Maybe the answers to all these questions are in the Vatican's secret library, and the general public doesn't need to know them. 9. Archives identifying the Vatican as the seat of Satan, as Protestants have accused Rome since the 16th century. No such variant would be excluded, although I am skeptical, as in the case of point 1, that the papacy would still keep such documents. 10. Materials proving the existence of extraterrestrials. Here is indeed an interesting hypothesis made in the context in which the Catholic Church itself recognizes the possibility of the existence of extraterrestrials. And I think that those at the Vatican definitely have more detailed information on this subject, otherwise he would not have ventured to make judgments without evidence. Chronovisor, the legendary time machine from the Vatican that defies the laws of nature. Ever since the idea of time travel by means of a machine was launched, an idea supported especially at the end of the 19th century by a science fiction writer, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, this possibility of moving between past and future has become the dream unattainable of many people. Since then, books, comics, and movies have been released focusing on this theme, all of which are science fiction and are based, more or less, on scientific assumptions. The Timer From the unsolved disappearance of Emanuela Orlandi in 1983 to a secret collection of documents known as the Apostolic Archive, the history of the Vatican is full of secrets. And of all the supposed secrets of the Vatican, none can be more bizarre than the legend of the chronometer. It's not a time machine, but it looks a lot like one. The timer is said to be a device that allows you to witness, as if you were watching a television program, events from the past and even some scenes from the near future. Unfortunately, not much is known about this Vatican device. This machine was described in luxurious detail in the book The New Mystery from the Vatican, published in 2002 and signed by the French priest Francois Brun, deceased in 2019. Francois Brun has been gathering evidence of chronovision since the early 1960s. According to Brun, the device was developed by Father Pellegrino Ernetti, a Benedictine monk. Ernetti allegedly kept the device secret until the early 1960s when he told Brun that 12 scientists, including renowned physicist Enrico Fermi and Werner von Braun, a German-American scientist, Pioneer and visionary of the development of technology and flight rockets, they helped build it. The stopwatch is based on Einstein's theory of relativity. The chronograph, developed in the 1950s, was described by Arnetti as being equipped with several antennas, composed of mysterious minerals, a cathode ray tube, and a whole series of buttons and levers to select the place and time to be displayed. The system is, or should be, simple and is based on the theory of relativity formulated by Einstein. The timer receives, decodes, and reproduces the events of the past by means of the visual and sound traces left in the atmosphere. According to the principle that in the universe nothing is destroyed, but everything remains in the form of energy. According to the words of Pellegrino Ernetti, the whole elaboration is based on a principle of physics accepted by everyone, according to which sound and visual waves, once emitted, do not destroy, but transform and remain eternal and omnipresent, so they can be reconstituted like any energy, because they themselves are energy. 
Ernetti and Francois Brun met in Venice in the early 1960s, where they discussed possible interpretations of the Bible, but also about Ernetti's incredible invention, the chronograph. The cleric was passionate about physics and had specialized studies in this field. He was, among other things, official exorcist of the Diocese of Venice and professor of pre-polyphonic music at the Benedetto Marcello Conservatory. He collaborated with Father Agostino Gemelli, a Franciscan physician and monk who founded the Catholic University, with whom he conducted experiments to record the voices of the dead. Perhaps that is why it was not difficult for Brun to believe Renetti when, while they were discussing the different interpretations of the Bible, he told him about the invention of the chronovisor, made together with other scientists, capable of opening windows on events from the past. Pellegrino Renetti told Francois Brun that the windows in time, opened with the chronometer, allowed the monk to watch Mussolini give his speeches, to verify that the chronometer was reliable, as these were documented events to observe the deeds of Napoleon and then, going further in time, to listen to the speeches of Cicero and witness the performance of the tragedy of the Teast, which took place in the year 169 BC at Rome. The monk also told Brun about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and, above all, about the death of Jesus Christ, I saw everything. The agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal of Judas, the trial, the ordeal, However, Father Francois Brun is not the only one to whom Renetti confides his secret. In 1972, the monk gave an interview to the weekly La Domenica del Corriere, in which he talked about the time machine. The term chronovisor was coined years later by Luigi Borello, how the device works and what's seen in the past. But this astonishing invention has not been shown to anyone, just as no one is in a position to attest to the veracity of Renetti's claims. After the interview given to the publication Domenica del Corriere, Pellegrino Renetti took refuge behind an impenetrable silence. He no longer wanted to talk about his invention, perhaps also because of the controversy it had caused. In 1994, the monk claimed the authenticity of his invention, which had become the property of the Vatican.